I think I think if I had a little a glass of wine, I'd do a lot better with this. You want to get some wine? Yeah, honestly, I think I'd go do get some wine real okay, quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> everybody, welcome to Our Mom Critiques Wild Bow, a proud member of the Doof Network. In this podcast, my sister and I force our mother to read Pale, Wild Bow's longest work. I'm Jenny, and Malia convinced me to read Worm. I'm Malia, and Jenny convinced me to read everything else. And I'm their mom, and my girls got me into this. This episode, we are covering the second half of Arc 3, Out on a Limb. All right, we're going to go over the summary of chapters. In 3.6, Verona's dad promises to go out to dinner with Verona and then backtracks, leading Verona to take some money from him and go to downtown Kennet, where she sees Brie, the woman who won the Hungry Choir ritual and calls for backup. Verona and Avery confront Brie and Zed, who tell them that they want to bind the Hungry Choir. In 3.7, Lucy and Verona speak with Rowan, who uses... Nope. And use the wrong glamour to turn themselves into light. The girls meet with the town's others. Yalda is confirmed to be a part of the choir. The others then vote, refusing to help fight the hungry choir and refusing to teach the trio binding. 3.7 extra. We get to see some of the cool stuff the Kenneteers got from Zed. In 3.8, the trio makes a plan and breaks Bree out of her captivity. They escape. Lucy delays by dueling with Guillerme or Guillaume. That was weird. Okay. And they make a deal with Zed. Gihem. Big G. <laughs> Gilame. Big G. Yeah, that's, you know, it's whatever. It's a, it's a name that starts with G that's kind of French looking and kind of Or long. Portuguese. Or, per- sure, Portuguese. <laughs> One of them. I, I, yeah, they're very related. Easy mistake to make. Um, 3.9. Avery goes to the grocery store with her mom and sees some people that she knows. Snowdrop and the trio meet on the rooftop, interview Louise, and find a clue in the coin from the awakening ritual. In 3.9 Extra Materials, we see some logs of Zed communicating with Ray via the magical internet. And then 3.Z, which, or 3.Z, I mean, I don't know. I I don't know why I thought that was funny. It's not funny. It's actually (laughs) literally Zed. Um, The Hungry Choir is bound. Zed comes up with a plan. Bree and a whole bunch of others execute it and Yalda is defeated. Zed calls the Kenneteers to let them talk to Yalda. What did you think of these chapters, Mom? <laughs> okay, well, um, the writing was was really interesting, as always. Really liked it. Um, but I, I have to say, lots of time, I don't have a clue what's happening. <laughs> so I don't like that. I don't like that feeling. There's so many characters to remember, and, um, um, you know, new meanings for things. There's a lot of stuff that my brain is, you know, it's hurting sometimes. Yeah. yeah, that was hard. Mom, what did you think of the name Brie in terms of being the winner of the Hungry Choir? Just her Jeez. name? Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, but- I've never thought about this <laughs> ever. Are about? you serious? <laughs> you I've never thought about that. What? what? You well, how have you never be? thought no, about you that? Have you have to. Oh, God. Oh, oh that was God. the first Malia. thing I thought of. How have yeah. you never thought of that? No, it's so appropriate. <laughs> you know, okay. You'd well, have well to, this is going to yeah. blow your mind, Malia, because I was going to oh bring up God. like I, I came up with a great <laughs> ship name that I actually commented on Facebook a long time ago, and I think it got like two likes, <laughs> and I I'd always thought it never got the appreciation that it deserved. But right, the ship name, um, because uh, mom, that's basically like short for like relationships it's people that you kind of want to be in a relationship so oh, people okay. will sometimes make like little names um and so obviously the best ship name for brie and zed is bread <laughs> oh brie my gosh and uh, zed no and cheese. really and and cheese <laughs> well yeah i mean yeah. it's obvious <laughs> Come, Malia. Uh, You're just a late bloomer. It's okay. No, it's. I appreciate that. That was a good. You, that wild bow. He's got. He's three dimensional at least. Maybe see, more. Mom, when you say that you don't understand the story, and I didn't understand that. That's that's really it's been like the main. sixteen arcs. <laughs> <laughs> like how? Like <laughs> yeah. What? 
Uh, anyway, Malia's going insane. Um, I know. But I probably would, that. too, if I didn't realize that <laughs> Brie was like a cheese. It was cheese. Yeah. yeah. It was right there all along. It was right there. <laughs> it was so obvious. The secret meaning of the story yeah, was there the all whole along. Thing. Yeah. <gasps> <gasps> Oh, I'm sorry. She does this. Just calm down, Malia. It's okay. She can't calm down. How did we not all know immediately who would win the Hungry Choir ritual? I mean, that's a good Or what point. did we learn her name? Did we learn her name in that section or did we learn it just now? Fuck, I don't remember. I don't, th- I don't think we learn it until after Charity wins it. Uh, okay. That's, my, that's what I'm thinking, at least. It's okay. my story and I'm sticking to it until hmm. someone tells us that we're wrong. But that's what I think. <laughs> um all right so now we're gonna move on to listener questions now that we've gotten that uh that out of the way and i'm so glad that we brought that up because holy crap i didn't realize that was gonna blow your mind like oh my god like just yeah wow i'm great malaya yeah that's freaking hilarious okay (laughs) all right well um yeah we wrote out a lot of listener questions um because there are a lot of listener questions. I don't know if we put all of them in, to be honest, but we put a lot of them in. So, and they were really good and they're fairly comprehensive. And so, yeah. But no one asked the thing about the Brie. No. <laughs> they, didn't right. they didn't need to. They didn't need to. It's obvious. So, <laughs> it is sorry, Malia. It's kind of obvious, but it's okay. Oh my God. It's okay. Um, that's fine so you know what we don't need to rub it in everyone you know (laughs) that's just really funny to me okay um waterfall asks what do you think of brie that's our first question (laughs) well i love brie you know with um a nice glass of red wine (laughs) just to get malia (laughs) okay i'll stop it's obviously better with white and jam no no it's yeah and have you ever like baked it and you put Mm. okay let me stop i need to go no okay Okay, so brie yeah um you know i don't know whether to say she's even a positive or negative person to me she's more positive i mean i like her except that i always thought okay um, you, I guess since the last time we talked, I think I found out that for the hungry choir to, um, if the hungry choir ended, she would die. And I'm like, yep, life sucks. It's too bad. You know, cause that's just like, well, cause that's the obvious thing. Sometimes you've got to sacrifice one person for the, for everybody else, you know? And it sounds so, like a very utilitarian argument, mom. Oh, thank you. <laughs> 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 yeah so um yeah but anyway no I mean that's that would be the right way to do it though I'm sorry and so I always kind of had this I s- would stand back and have this opinion of Brie that yeah she sounds like a I was gonna say like a normal girl none of these people are normal <laughs> okay yeah. but anyway um you know she sounds like likable and and cute and she's you know been through a lot of hard stuff but that's what I think of her and then but no I I like her and um I think it's sweet how she's got kind of this relationship going with Zed and um now I think she totally I mean she totally did her part in the choir as disgusting as that was to read I'm sorry yeah (laughs) that was really tough for me to get through that but um but no she did a she she gave it her all I'm proud of her yeah. So yeah. yeah, I like Brie. Yep. Okay. Um oh, one last thing right. just to what? say. Oh yeah. She's she's aware but not awakened. And I find that um interesting at a little bit uncomfortable because things can happen to her or hurt her or something. But that's all. So I don't know what'll happen. Do you think she's gonna get awakened before like anything else real bad happens? I think so. Or- yeah. Okay. Cool. That's my guess. Cool. Okay. Um, our next question is from Mega Fire. Um, they ask, this whole arc has had a whole bunch happening with Verona and her dad. Um, the main thing was the blow up in 3.3 where Verona spit on him. But we mm-hmm. see the fallout of that in this chapter. Um, what's your perspective on this relationship as a parent? And optionally, Jenny and I can also comment on as a daughter. Okay. Um, 
I do really like reading the things about families and stuff, but, but um, it is, uh, uh, (laughs) I keep talking about the heart, the parts that are hard for me to read. That's kind of sad, but Verona's dad, you know, um, he is so lame. I, and so passive aggressive, you guys, don't you think? Like just yes. getting her all like her hopes up, like, you know, maybe he is going to be kind of a normal dad and we'll, and he's going to go buy me that good kind of pizza or whatever he's doing. As long as I wait for him to do some errand, I can't even remember what it was, you know? So she waits and waits and waits while he finishes his stupid TV show and maybe another. And then I think she went in there and he was like, um, I don't know if he was sleeping, but he was basically done for the day. And um, and then he said, well, I think she said something about it, which I would have been absolutely irritated. And he said, oh, well, you didn't seem excited about about it, you know, about going out. And that's where I just, you know, that was the worst. That's really passive aggressive. And I just, you know, you don't, you don't do that with anybody, but especially your kids. I mean, that's just, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. I thought that was terrible. Um, so I, yeah, I really don't like him. <laughs> I remember, you know, and um, mm-hmm. what one thing that, that I thought of that was interesting, I don't, this is just a different side of him is that even when um, there, he's really mad at her or whatever he, whatever's happening with them, he basically lets her go out with the other two and do things. Mm -hmm. Usually she's able to do that where, um, I, you know, I, I could see him grounding her or doing different things, um, like that, but he just, he always gives in and lets her go out. And I think that's, um, I don't know how to take that, but, um, as a parent, if I, um, if I had Verona and she was taking off like that, maybe, maybe sometimes he, she does that practice thing where he forgets what's happening, mm-hmm. but, mm-hmm. um, but I would kind of want to know where my daughters are, you know, just a little bit, you know, to know what's going yeah. on when they're going all the time and they have these needy friends who need them like right now, or they're going to die and stuff. I'd kind of want to be a little bit involved, but no, he's, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, he's the worst. That's why our house was tended. <laughs> I tended to really like to be the house where people came over. Mm-hmm, Although mm-hmm. you guys had a lot of good friends too. It wasn't, I didn't do it really for that reason, but it, it did make it nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sense. I remember this part um, being really upsetting because I think I thought there was hope, you mm-hmm. know, in this chapter, like I, I was yeah. like, Oh wow. Like, you know, is he going to go out and do this thing with right. her? Um, because you know, and part of me was like, oh, it's going to be so awkward because we're going to see them like at a restaurant and like, oh, God. But it was also like, oh, wow, maybe he, you know, maybe he's going to change. Like, maybe he's going to um, get out there and do that. And then at the end of the chapter, yeah, he's like in bed. Um, I I sort of wonder if he doesn't have the energy to police Verona, I guess, for like, he doesn't seem to have the energy to not lie around in bed when he's home. Yeah. And so I wonder if he also doesn't have the energy to be like, no, Verona, you can't go do whatever. Um, but yeah, um, I, I just remember this chapter being really upsetting because it was like, you see Verona get her hopes up and then like have them Dashed. disappointed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I know. Agree. And and it's that's not really that unrealistic, too. I mean, all of us know people with parents that that are like that or spouses or something and also as a parent I can't say that I've never done that you know which yeah. um what do you mean yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for you to say oh mom you've never done that come on Jen I can't okay I can't think of you doing that in particular but like you know just everybody has right. their off days or is right. kind of shitty sometimes you know uh-huh. <laughs> So. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't trying to say that my back for now. you. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, so no, no that I, was that was sad. Yeah, no, you had you were pretty good. You have, you tend to have a lot of energy to take us around and do junk. In fact, you had a little too much energy to make us do stuff sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like, like if we stayed home sick, like if we were legitimately <laughs> sick, you'd feel bad. 
and let us sleep for about in. three hours. For, yeah, <laughs> two to three hours, and then you'd be like, "Okay, let's start doing all the chores. Let's <laughs> clean oh, the house." Come on, are you serious? You don't remember I think that? You'd clean the house when you were sick. Yeah. yeah. How what? do you? Know? Are you're joking, right? You don't. No, are I'm you not saying... joking? That was so mean. Your yeah, empathy it was disappeared. every time. You oh, have really very quickly. intense and short-lived <laughs> empathy. <laughs> very, it's very oh, intense for a short amount of time, and then it oh. leaves. Nodding, I'm nodding, mom. Completely. That's what that's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's not shaking her head. She is oh, agreeing. Okay, with nodding. Me. I, I meant shaking it <laughs> up and down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, <sighs> um, yeah, it wasn't anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Although you did give us good mental health days. We could have a good mental health day, like one of one a semester, I think. Yeah. Like I did give or you. Or you let good us ones. stay home and like buy our favorite junk food and just Oh, like, tell them about take junk food day. That was pretty great. That was fun. That was the right. last the day after the last day of school, right? Mm-hmm. You'd like order it? A, or maybe I'm thinking of a different thing, but I'm thinking like of if we had to have if we wanted one like day off, we got Oh to yeah, skip that was school. different. No, and, I right. We had, had mental, mental health, health days. days. Yeah. And then we also yeah, had that was nice. I think the first day of a break, usually you would um we would be able to say exactly what we wanted you to buy, and you'd buy all like wonton chips and like a whole bunch of crap. Yeah, and ten weeks sit around in a bunch of junk, pajamas you know? and yeah, do you went you had your pajamas on. Now all I think day. about it, you had us clean more when we were physically sick than when we had <laughs> a mental health day. Like our mental health days, you were like, "That's fine, you can just lay around and do whatever." But we were we were actually sick. You're like, "All right." <laughs> You gotta get up and let's let's clean all the windows and vacuum. Did you realize and- the world is hearing this? <laughs> that's all right, I, that's okay. If that's the worst thing I did, at least I. I, I mean, you know, I don't ever had- remember being like so sick that I actually couldn't move or yeah, whatever. I'm sure if it was know? that bad, then you know, I might have not made have you it, but- clean the toilets, huh? Yeah, no, okay. hopefully not. But <laughs> you, but it was okay, just it was usually like- enough to be like, well, you know, if we're gonna of school i guess i have to kind of be actually kind of sick yeah you might as well be yeah because it's not even fun to stay home yeah (laughs) Yeah, exactly (laughs) well just to defend myself a little bit you guys both had friends that and you know i'm not going to say who they are but you had friends who um did not know how to do the laundry when they went to college i mean i I didn't want you to my friend don't say it don't say it (laughs) I don't even know who that is, to be honest. So I vaguely remember that, but I don't know who it was. Really? They're real. You, uh, you can't say it because, yeah. You but can anyway, type it in the chat box. I'm curious now. <laughs> I don't know where the chat box is. I'll I'll, I'll whisper it or Here. I won't whisper it. I'll be like. Don't whisper it. Yeah. Don't, Do you see where Jenny just wrote? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, just type it am. so that you can tell me. And then I'm sure all of you feel left out of this exchange. <laughs> I know. Like who out of Jenny's friends didn't okay, know got how it. to do th- Really? Hmm. That's that was the story. I thought they did. Apparently not. So um they went to college and that was the first time they had actually like done a load of laundry and stuff. Well and so hmm. I'm such a but great I, mom. I feel like at that point, like <laughs> I feel like it's kind of the parents' job to teach your kids like how to do the damn laundry though, you know. No, I do too. Like, yeah, that's part I mean, yeah, it's huh. So that's at least you can say that I that I didn't slack on my duties. That's true. Yeah. Teaching you how to clean the house. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're getting right. off the subject. Getting off the subject. All right. Which is that we're going to go to the next question from Snowdrop's Tiny Fan. Um, what do you think of Avery's mother's parenting based on their conversation in the parking lot in 3.9? Would you have let your kids hang around Verona's dad based on Avery's description of him? How would you approach parenting Avery in this situation or in general um, differently? Uh, see, um, okay, obviously, Avery's mom at least paid attention enough to know that something's really going on with Avery. She's trying to um, talk to her re- about it and stuff, which is really nice. But, you know, you're in a supermarket surrounded by 13 jerky little kids, you know, and um, <laughs> really it's the worst and and that's not the place to do it just yeah. don't even try you need to and and actually Avery deserves 
to have a special time. I don't care how you do Mm -hmm. it, but there's, you know, Avery's dad or hire a babysitter or two and, and get her and just, (laughs) and just, and just take, take her out for, you know, a shave ice or a nice sit on the beach and just talk about it, you know, and say, and just spend a nice time. If you don't have a beach in Canada, I'm sure you can find another (laughs) You know? uh, yeah, just a park, <laughs> go to a park or take her to a pizza place. That's always fun. And just um, spend an hour with her. And, um, and you don't have to make her spill her guts or talk the whole time. But you do want to, her to know that she can talk to you without mm-hmm. you just jumping down her back, you know, or her throat. How, what do you jump down? Jumping down your throat. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> but you know, you that's one thing as a parent, all you people out there, that are going to be parents or that are, um, be really careful about, um, when your kids say something about your reaction. I I've learned that Mm, by doing mm -hmm. it wrong. And, um, but I did really learn that on Jenny. Sorry, Jen, but be, and that Malia was perfect with you. Yeah. And Jenny was also (laughs) got into more trouble. (laughs) No, I didn't. Yes, you did. Well, no, I I didn't get into hardly any trouble. You were pretty (laughs) No, she was pretty good. But like anyway, the, okay, wait, the one I day I tried to skip school to like go to lunch. <laughs> it wasn't even skipping school. It was just leaving campus to go to eat lunch, which uh, everyone like in years before could do. And they stopped my senior year. Like we were just going to go to get lunch and come back. Like <laughs> my freaking science teacher saw us leave. And then we still came back for class. And he's like... <laughs> gave us crap about it and like made me feel like I did something terribly bad. And I was like, really? The one time (laughs) I do something like that. And of course my teacher sees. Okay. I I can say I was way worse when I was a senior. (laughs) I mean, I think you're probably right. Yeah. (laughs) But, but, um, but anyway, (laughs) what was I talking about? Oh, you're so how how you react. Oh, yeah. So how you guys should do as parents. This is my advice. So, um, so yeah, let your kids talk, try not to overreact. And you need to be somebody they can confide in. And um, because that's really important to keep the communication open. You know, it really is let them make a few mistakes, not a lot. And um, but, but anyway, where was I? I love to get on that soapbox. Um, so yeah, there were, anyway, she just needs to take her out and um, have some conversations with her. And then not just once, but, you know, a couple times, because she's got that, that, that family is chaos. <laughs> and you, yeah. yeah, sometimes she needs to be special, which is hard in that family. And every, all the kids do just once yeah. in a while, instead of always like, oh, let's take a vote. Okay. Everybody wants to watch this one show and you never, you know, you never win. Yeah. <clears throat> They should yeah. each get like a day of the week. Oh, that's a nice show. idea. Yeah. Or something. Something. Yeah. Or pick yeah. what's for dinner or whatever they do. Hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what did I do? Verona's dad. Now that's, that's a little hard one. I would say that I would not forbid you guys to go over there. Um, but, but I would, cause I, I like to not make hard, fast rules like that. I don't, I don't think he had ever physically hurt her or anything. He's just a real jerk. So, um, and I, and I, again, you would need to know your daughter and probably her friends enough to be able to know if there was some really bad thing. Um, Mm -hmm. but, but I think he's just kind of a, you know, a dad that's not fully there. And, um, so I would let them go over, but I would much prefer to have Verona and Lucy come to my house. And, um, hmm. cause that's always really nice. You can make it fun for them, but I, but I think it's okay to, to do it both ways. What do you guys think? Yeah. I mean, I think it's tricky in terms of like, um, I feel like you and dad were really good about letting us do things. Um, so that like when I got to college and just in general, I never felt this need to like rebel. Um, I didn't ever really feel constrained. Um, and I could see that, maybe some sort of like, oh, I don't want you ever going over there could feel kind of restrictive. Mm -hmm. Um, But that said, I do think, I mean, I don't know. I feel like Avery's mom reacts pretty well in this situation because Avery is very vague because Avery, I don't think really knows either. Um, She just feels kind of like bad vibes. Um, And so, but I would be worried about, you know, cutting Avery off from her friends or something like that. Um, I think the policy of, have the kids come to your place is a great one, but mm-hmm. they're also 
so busy at their house that um yeah i don't know yeah yeah okay next question is from sleeping beluga they ask verona mentions wanting to become a cat and lucy refuses her what do you think the limits for verona being a cat should be putting the issue of glamour aside is there an issue with being a cat too much okay um i guess i don't know for sure but i think i mean i think think that there is I think if she's a cat too much she could stay a cat or something and I don't know where I get that from but that's my impression and I think um, that's like a glamour issue oh really yeah that like maybe the glamour could make her stay that way kind of so oh, okay. but it, but aside from the glamour thing oh okay so um the only you know I don't think it's that big a deal aside from the glamour then except that she's avoiding her normal life and which might be good a little bit <laughs> you know might give her a break <laughs> just a bit but um you know I think that her friends still need her she still needs her friends and the more she's human it's probably a little bit better for everybody but I don't think mm. if if you don't worry about the glamour then I think um being a cat could be really a great escape once in a while. Hmm. Yeah. Would you be okay with us becoming a cat or a dog to escape our lives? I'd be fine. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> what what would animal you would you choose? Oh, see, I was going <laughs> to ask you. No fear. No fear. <laughs> I'll say, okay, I'm... since I'm surrounded by cats right <laughs> now, that they they get to do whatever they want. I mean, they. Yep. I'm serious. You know, you cut, yeah. try to shoo them away and get out of here, and they just they they are so persistent. I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. And finally, you're like, okay, whatever, just come here and and shed all over me and get you know <laughs> make my nose itch and just make yourself all happy. And they dig their little claws into you because they're so happy. <laughs> and you can't. My cat even drools on me if she gets happy enough, you know. And it's just like psycho oh, kitty. Her or the yeah psycho outside. kitty she's oh, okay. she's yeah. <laughs> your name is Mila <laughs> no I don't know I well mean, yeah I guess she's kind of she's, goes back she's, and forth. I thought Caboodle I feel like drills really easily oh she yeah does, she yeah. does Caboodle is she just is like so drips sweet. it's kind of weird <laughs> my cats are way too happy I mean but anyway no I think I'd be a cat because I get to do whatever I want wherever I want and I can jump into trees like faster than lightning mm. and if, if the dog chases you you can just jump right up and be like nan and nan, nan, nan you know because <laughs> Swiffer hates it he'll get all upset so yeah cat I think I'd be a bird of prey Ooh, Ooh. because I feel like a normal bird is a little bit too vulnerable. And I just want to fly. I don't want to have anybody mess with me. Oh, I like but flying. That would be fun. That'd be pretty fun. Yeah. Could be an owl, which actually aren't that smart <laughs> compared to like their stereotype, I think. Mm hmm. You know, they're just I don't remember if they're dumb or if they're just like average, <laughs> but I don't I'm think not sure. I don't remember, but I feel like I've heard that they're not actually. That but smart. what about the wise old owl? They're supposed to be yeah, wise. Yeah, that's just that, yeah, that's a that's just Disney, huh? Okay. <laughs> yeah, corvids yeah. are actually a lot smarter. So like cra ravens and crows, mm -hmm. wow. <clears throat> blue jays. Yeah, owls just look. They look pretty cool though. Yeah, they look cool. So, yeah, they can turn their head around and <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, they do look cool. Things. I feel like I'd be cool with being an owl. You know, <laughs> channel comedy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, our elementary school uh, had the Pueo. Pueo. Yeah, the owl just is the mascot. Short-eared owl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Malia, which almost turn. flew into our car wheel windshield once. But anyway, yeah, that was all these sad. things I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know if you were in the car for that, but mm. anyway, <laughs> um, a, might be my turn to read the next question. Oh, let's hear what Malia wants to be. Oh yeah, Malia. Malia. Yeah, sorry. Um, I mean, part of me also feels like a cat. I spend so much time being very jealous of my cat for doing nothing. not having to do anything and just like it'd be so interesting to experience that level of flexibility and the level <laughs> of like athleticism like they can jump so high yeah. she like she uses her back legs as a pillow um she's a fascinating hmm. girl she like curls up and she just stretches her legs out and she puts her head on them <laughs> and it's like what the fuck is going you you could probably um, do that nope <laughs> 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 okay yeah maybe not but like other than that I get um, yoga. i've always really liked seals they're like big and fat mm, and happy but they cute. also swim real fast um 
So if I was like near some sort of ocean, that could be fun. Although ugh, it's just like being a wild animal is so like hard because you're going to get eaten or you're whatever. Get eaten, yeah. But then again, being a captive animal that oh is used that can, in a zoo that <laughs> yeah that's not great oh, right. either. I was thinking a cat because I was like that controls your owner's lives. The the dream. <laughs> that's true, but it's a, it all well. I thought yeah, I thought you were going to say like because huh, we were talking about like imagining the flexibility. I thought you were going to be like just like imagine the attitude like <laughs> and the entitlement you know <laughs> of cats uh, Egwene never she's a sweet one she whenever she tries to eat our food it's never sneaky like some animals know that they're doing the wrong thing and that they have to like take the food from you Egwene's like oh that food I can eat that and she just like walks up and tries to eat it and you're like no and so you, you like yeah twist yourself into like all these weird things because she's not like trying to grab it she just literally is like oh I'm going to eat that now while you That's are eating funny. it <laughs> because it is our food <laughs> anyway All right. um elliot asks what do you think of the discord growing between the kenneteers and the kennet others oh yeah well i was i actually didn't get that for a while because it seems so obvious to me that rescuing brie was a, a good thing to do and stopping mm-hmm. the hungry choir. I'm like, why, why wouldn't they be on board with that for, so for about two chapters, I still didn't really get it, you know? And so, but then finally, I guess it's, be, I guess they voted not to, you know, not to go along with them because of the power that they got from the hungry choir. Is that right? You guys? What? <laughs> Sorry. I like, I think we both like, <clears throat> Sorry, I was blowing my nose, I so just, I muted. I, you were saying that they I, I voted. I built my whole life out to the world. You guys suck. God. Yeah, if you were here, I'd make you do housework. So there. <laughs> oh, look, I have a kitty here. Oh, oh, gosh. Hi, Mila. Oh, gee. Yeah. Hi, Psycho Kitty. <laughs> okay, somebody tell me what I just said. Um, I said <laughs> they were kind of doing what I think was the obviously good thing to do by um, mm-hmm. stopping the hungry choir. And then the um, the others decided not to go along with that. And so I didn't really understand until two chapters later. And I'm thinking, is that because of the power that everybody gets from the hungry choir? Is that the only reason? I think that's a big part of it. Um, like they're very strong and um they need it's like they everyone all the others are drawing on their own strength to support the Kenneteers and also to support the town. Um and so like it doesn't necessarily seem like it based on the way that Lucy and Avery and Verona act, but it takes a lot of power to do stuff, right? Like to do magic actually yeah. does take up um, a decent amount of power. And so they are, I think, concerned about that. Okay. Because, yeah, because to me, um, that was really I was puzzling, you know, because it seems like these girls have done a lot. They for they mm-hmm. for the town and for mm-hmm. um for the practitioners and everything. And um I just didn't get that. But <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I don't and I, I don't I think that yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what will happen with it. They <clears throat> yeah, a a lot could. <laughs> yeah. Um and yeah, it's interesting. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Um, but our next question, also from Elliot, is um, in 3.8, Bree eats a bit of Gashwad. What do you reckon he tasted like? Like, oh my God, Elliot. <laughs> that's a, you, that's, I like these kind of questions because I'm like, okay, I all I know, he <laughs> is a goblin. And so it's not going to be good because <laughs> Go- goblins are like fish that are bottom feeders you know you know that they're going to be digging Damn. into trash cans and their best thing is going to be when they find you know some meat or something that's that's a day or two old that has maggots all over it i'm sorry Ew. but it's going to be stinky. yeah it's going to be bad stinky maggots slimy and not good so that's Ew. what it's going to be <laughs> well it is <sighs> well i and- that's gross, mom, but cool. <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, don't you agree? I just missed that. Totally. Unfortunately. 
Well, it's gross. Oh, you missed a good one. No, it's all right. What gash wood would taste like? Gash oh. wad. Gash wad. You wrote on here, like, stinky, maggot, slimy. Yeah. Because they're like it's bottom kinda, feeders, you know? So I kind of, I listened to this podcast. Um, It's called Off oh, Menu. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great <laughs> podcast. Um, It's with these two British comedians, um, uh, Ed Gamble and James A. Caster. And they basically like have a different um, guest on every week. And they ask them what their dream meal would be. And Ooh. they have a secret ingredient every week that if they pick, if the guest picks the secret ingredient, they get kicked off of the restaurant like kicked out of the podcast <laughs> and only one person's ever had the secret ingredients so far and it was right at the end of the episode so it was kind of perfect but <laughs> the reason i bring this up is i just listened to one of their episodes with Corey taylor um who is like the lead singer or no he's not i don't know if he's a lead singer actually but he's he's part of the band of slipknot um, oh, which, cool. um is like uh, one of Ed, like one of Ed's like favorite bands um, and the secret ingredient that they did for him was maggots. Oh, <laughs> and so come on. I think partially, I think partially because like they're kind of a hardcore like band and they were just like, who knows, maybe he actually could pick maggots cause he's like that weird. But also I think it's like, they didn't want to kick him out. Kick so him off. <laughs> <laughs> so Wait, they don't make food with maggots. Do they? No. I mean, that wasn't on the menu, was it? It wasn't no. on the menu, no. But you know, people eat insects and stuff, and I Not mean maggots. Like... Let's draw the line. <laughs> <laughs> I almost want to say maybe they. No, they might. I, I think that there's like some kind of cheese thing. Yeah, oh hold God. on. You're no, it came. No, the cheese. Let's see. So, so no. there it's you the go. Brie. Okay, maggots oh. in food. Maggots no. may be fried and eaten in places <gasps> where eating bugs is commonplace. They can also be used to make a Sardinian delicacy. Kasu marzu translates to maggot cheese or rotten no. cheese. It's oh an Italian God. cheese that's prepared specially to turn into breeding grounds for maggots. <gasps> so oh. you're welcome for that. <laughs> so he they he could have. I mean, I don't know who would pick that for their dream meal, but uh, wow. I guess it could have happened. So <laughs> there you go. <clears throat> Learn something new every day. So yeah. do you think that he? Ta do you think that? Gashwad tasted like maggot cheese or, or do you, or do you brie. think it's it or, yeah, it's, yeah there's something weird there if if, if brie eats gashwad I, does she taste more like maggot cheese can we just not mm. <laughs> <laughs> okay i'm sorry okay. next next question next question oh, um gosh. megafire asks again um arc three ends with a couple of practitioners really going all out what do you think of the various kinds of magic at play here Oh, that there was a lot for me to keep up with. And um, well, let me see, I liked the was it Eloise that drew something in the earth picked it up? It was like a fire thing or something. And it glowed like fire. That was very cool. Do you remember that? Hmm. What kind of magic do you think Eloise does? Do you remember um, Malia? No. <laughs> it said she was she deflected things. But I don't know if that was the kind of magic. I mean, I don't even understand the question. That's fair. Is it? I was okay? trying to. I was trying to see if Malia remembered. Uh, no, nope. <laughs> you know, anything. one of the best okay. things was um, that lady, Miss Doricher, uh -huh. she just like screams with all her might and does these guttural noises. And um, it, to. I, to, what does she do? Summons the monsters or summon the monsters or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was really something. <laughs> it's pretty metal. It's pretty yeah. metal. Okay. So yeah, I, I don't know what I think of it, but it <laughs> caught my interest. Yeah. <laughs> that was right when it's yeah. Uh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, well, we have a lot of questions about all the practitioners at the end. So um similarly, Elliot asks, um, about those practitioners and he says how do they strike you as people do you think the Kenneth others paranoia um and the belief that practitioners are bad is justified you know i'd be i'd be pretty paranoid if i were them yeah i don't think i have enough information you know i think my um answer for this will change as i keep reading but um yeah i don't think you can trust them you know it that's my mm. whole thing i wouldn't trust them yeah I okay. guess, is there anything in particular about, because I mean, like, Zed seems like a cool guy, right? Like, 
What do you think? I don't know. Do you think Zed's a good person? <laughs> Gosh, that's such a yes or no. I I mean, if I had to, I'll say yes, I guess he could be okay, mm-hmm. but he could also um, turn the staticky music on and do things if he, you know, it's just, I'm not sure whose side everybody is on and how, ha- and what the rules are. I don't quite get it, but sure. you know, a lot of them seem, um, at, on face value, like they could be fun to hang out with and they're probably good. But yeah, I just don't get the rules right now. Mm-hmm. Not- okay. Um, next we have is a Shin, Shin 7 or yeah, Shin say, V. Yeah, I was trying to decide if I should say Shin 7 or Shin 7 or Shin V. Uh, Shin Vi. Shin. Nope. No. Nope, no. We. No. Shin on the seven. Discord. Shin yes. Seven. Okay. Shin 7. All right. Fine. I missed that. I missed that Discord <laughs> conversation malia um between ray durashe and alexander the three adults present at the binding of yalda which one do you like the most and which one do you like the least or do you have a clue yet oh gosh. and also what do you think about there being like actual adults and i don't know i just like is that and a bunch of children well i don't even get that question malia i mean never mind then i okay. don't know <laughs> i just find it interesting that they were the adults and there, the rest, like everyone else, there was like a teenager. Oh, but yeah, no, yeah. Pick I, your I favorite. My favorite, I'd say Ray. I kind of like Ray. Okay. Um, I don't know why he's got cool sunglasses. Kind of got this mm-hmm. cool look about him. He's a little bit. Um, he's you know, I don't think I quite know what's going on about him and Hector and how he's been traumatized in the past, but that's going to come up again. I like the way that he he seems pretty dedicated to zed like zed Mm -hmm. so yeah he's probably my favorite although i don't i hope to hear more about him later and um boy the other two are real the least um i'd say the most disturbing is the (laughs) dorichur you know with her just screaming and these monsters coming but i but i won't say that makes me dislike her i'm just kind (laughs) of horrified by her and hope that i never have to read about it again you know but um but Alexander, yeah, I don't really like him. I think he's a bad guy. Mm. Why is that? Just kind of just vibes or like, I think rather. I don't remember a couple, cha- you know, a, a long time ago when I, for, when he was first introduced and stuff, he was yeah. more, um, he, he really, Nicolette, you right? can never, yeah, Nicolette thing. And you can't trust him. I think he's yeah. in there he for only himself and he's going to try to twist things around and get other people in trouble. And possibly when the three of those girls get into his school, he's going to trick them somehow. So, um, yeah, I don't like him. It's all just a guess. But sure. That's <laughs> yeah. fine. Cool. Um, next question is by Sleeping Beluga again about this new group of practitioners we've met. Um and they go over a little summary just for those of you who haven't read the lo- chapter in a long time. I'm going to kind of go through and remind you who we meet. So we meet Zed and Ray, the technomancy practitioners. Um, we see the augers again. So like Nicolette and Alexander and Chase. Um, we see um, Duroche, who does the whole monster screaming business. There's Ulysses. Um, who's Duroche's apprentice, and he broke up some of the bones with a god mace or something. Um, there's Eloise, who did the thing with the connections and has the centipede. Um, and then there's Jessica, who made a barrier, and she helped with some of the wounded. Um, and Sleeping Beluga wants to know, Mom, if any of these people in particular interest you, um, and maybe what do you think is like their story or whatever. Like, if you just want to pick one and kind of like say this person was cool or whatever. <laughs> okay. I know. Uh, um, yeah. I'm anxious for him to, to get, cause I like when they really explore the characters and we really get to know their backgrounds and different things like that. So I feel like I don't know these. Are they people? people I don't well. know. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> That's a good question. I'm sure. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure, but um, yeah, I don't know them well enough, but the one that sticks out in my mind is Eloise. And it's because of that. He even has a name. What was it? He has a... Oh, oh it's like Schmargermar. Yeah, Skepter. No, it wasn't that. I, what? Yeah, I don't know. It starts with an S. He, but he, find it. She has a centipede as a familiar. So it's wrapped around her arm. Schartzmoogle. 
Oh yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> Bless Those you. names. That's kind of a, I, that makes me happy. That's a good name. But a centipede wrapped around your arm. I mean that I can't feed on the floor right now. I've had I, I've had um, experiences living in Hawaii with centipedes, and it's never a good thing. And it always you think you're scared of mice uh, and jump up on a yeah. chair. No, you can't even do that with centipedes. You need to go running. Yeah, because they'll them. climb up after you. Um, oh yeah, and if you you know, and it's it, so I we don't see them a lot, but they're those things are brutal and they hurt. I've been bit once by oh, them, and that's yep. a whole story. But <laughs> anyway, too. hurt the they yeah, hurt they hurt. Who's been bit? you guys Sunday? have been bit? I knew. Yeah, both of yeah. You do were... we all want to tell our stories because they're fun? Well, mine's oh, fun. They're so Jenny's fun. horrifying. <laughs> Oh, let me How tell mine first. I don't remember. Okay, you go first, so mom. Yeah, fun. go first, mom. Okay, this is just so dumb. And, uh, you know, I learned from this one. <laughs> but, um, that is funny. But so I was camping oh, in, um, I, I'd done three trips through Haleakala, which is a crater here on Maui. It's really <clears throat> spectacular. And um, it's very cool if you can ever do that. So mm-hmm. my my three trips, the first two were so dumb. I did them without a tent. Um, so the first That's one, pre- it's just pretty dumb, really dumb, especially say. trip number two. You didn't learn from trip number one that you need a tent. <laughs> so trip number two. And, and so <laughs> I think that's the one I brought Sue on. Oh, no, no. I don't even know. Anyway. um, Okay. So I, I made this whole trip. I was exhausted. You're out sleeping under the stars. You wake up in the morning with waterfalls all around you. This is like on day two when you've hiked across the crater and you're at Poliku and you haven't hiked down the whole, you know, volcano yet. Kaupo? Kaupo? That's the trail you did? Well, Poliku is that, yeah, I went down Kaupo, but, um, Probably because like the campsite area, the campsite. right? So, I, I'm yeah. trying to f- Google the length so I can tell our people. Oh, okay. Poly- so it's like it's 10 Poly-Coo miles in, is right? the cabin. Yeah, it's like um, 10 miles across. So the, you hike 10 miles that day. You're so tired. And it, and usually you can't get the cabins because it's some, you know, rig drawing that I never got into. So you have to sleep <laughs> yeah. outside someplace. And so I was like, oh, that's okay. So I had a sleeping bag put it out. And in the morning you wake up with like, I swear, like 30 waterfalls all around you. You just look at it. It's so amazing. But the problem with the waterfalls is that means your sleeping bag is soaking wet because it's been raining on you all night. So I like wrung out the water in my sleeping bag. You throw this thing on your back that weighs like 20 pounds or something. I don't even know. Well, and so you're trudging out and that day you have 17 miles straight downhill to go. It was brutal. So, oh no, the 17, no, I think I did go 17, but anyway, you're going downhill and it's horrible. And we finally made it to Hana. And, um, and again, we didn't have yet. We found out we had to get, a uh, um, some kind of permit to camp in the campgrounds. And we're like, Oh, great. So we went (laughs) off the trail. We went off the trail and there was, um, so I'm just like on the side of the trail and I decided to, um, so I'm sleeping like in a bikini because I was probably 20 and I did this stuff, you know, and um, <laughs> went, this dumb stuff. So I, I went in my sleeping bag and, um, and was sleeping and I dragged the sleeping bag over on top of La Hala leaves, which are, you can look them up, but they're, they're these, um, all the leaves fall all over the ground. And I thought, oh, this will be more comfy than just sitting on the hard ground. <laughs> so I'm sleeping on the La Hala leaves in the sleeping bag, which was kind of unzipped because it was hot, you know, it was like raining and steam is coming up and it's just like misery. So, um, so at one point I'm just sleeping there. It's kind of raining on me. Actually the La Hala trees made it so it didn't rain on you so much, but when it dripped, it was these big, huge drips, you know, just that would drip on you. So I was kind of just, just, you know, waiting it out. And then I felt this big scratchy leaf on my chest and I went to grab it and it, and it was a centipede, this huge centipede and it bit me. And I was just like, ah! you know, and my, and my friends were like, oh my God, Cheryl, Cheryl. They thought I was, you know, being 
like attacked or something. And so I'm like, I'm all right. I'm all right. You know, and I was just, and the whole rest of the night, I stood up there with a flashlight, just going around my feet, looking for centipedes. I wouldn't even sit down and um, it was miserable. And that's that terrible. was my centipede story. And then the next day, it kind of, it was on my, the end of my finger and it, it swelled Ouch. up and kind of made the, my bottom part of my arm swell up and all red and everything. But, um, but that's it, you know, so it was, I guess better than your boob, but. Oh yeah. <laughs> Shoot. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So it was okay, but I don't like centipedes, man. Oof. Yeah. Oh, the other thing, I have one more little centipede story. It's Cause we don't, I've never got bitten since then, knock on wood, but I, um, but you get them once in a while in your house, like not very often, mm-hmm. but you'll get them or you'll see them outside. So what I do is I run for the scissors and I have scissors in <laughs> in every room of the house you'll run to the scissors <laughs> and and gra- hopefully big scissors you know and grab them and just cut them but they'll keep going is the trouble yeah, and it, rem- they, it reminds you of that sorcerer's apprentice that when mickey mouse does <laughs> stuff with the brooms <laughs> What does it doesn't remind do? me of that. It totally, I think of it every time. The brooms, and what does he do with the brooms? Something. So he like chop it up and then yeah, it, chops they up grow the into. Yeah. It makes more brooms. A and bunch that's of brooms. what I yeah. always think of with centipedes. So there's my story. Yeah. So very rough estimation based on a bunch of Googling. I think that whole hike mom described is about 25 miles, which is why it takes two days. Um, so that's about 40 kilometers. Um, so mom's. I think it's actually 50 miles, or that's what I used to tell people. I don't think it's, well, okay. Starting from Hosmer's Grove and going down and then going across. Oh, I did from Sliding Sands. Hosmer's Grove? You didn't start Sliding Sands? No. I started, it's called Hale, not Hosmer's Grove, but Hale. or whatever. Ma'u'u or something, yeah. So you start up there, you go down, you go across 10 miles, and then it's some 17-mile thing. And then you have to walk around to Hana, Wainapanapa National Park. But anyway. Right, no, this is just to get you technically off the mountain. I don't know how long it takes you to walk through Hana. (laughs) Jeez, mom. <laughs> no, you was, went the hard. No, that, I was wow. so ridiculous. So you ridiculous. You probably wore slippers too. <laughs> yeah. Well, at the end I did because like my feet were killing me. <laughs> I mean, they had blisters yeah. all over. So yeah, slippers kind of saved me. Oh, yeah, I was not. Yeah, I and so. slippers are not fuzzy bedroom slippers, you guys. Just no, so they're you know. like flip they call flip-flops. Slip-flops or whatever. They're called slippers. Thongs. Yeah, if you ever come to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. Okay, when, when did you get bitten, Malia? Okay, yeah. So in 10th grade, I was having this party. um, Yeah. And it wasn't like, like, some of it was my friends that I knew pretty well. And so it was like this other friend group that went to a different school. And we were like, trying to be cool and trying to like, you know, bond and make friends with these people. Um, And I remember I'm sitting on our yard and I'm wearing jeans. And so like full pants. And I don't remember if I was on a blanket but I suddenly just feel this like sharp pain in my leg <laughs> and I scream really loud or like, oh, no, I don't, I don't scream. I like shout. I'm like, ah, and I'm like, I jump up and I start slapping my leg oh and everyone's like, gosh. uh, and I just like, was like, uh, and I just like ran into the house. Um, and I ran directly into mom and dad's bedroom and I am pretty sure you were both in there and I'm just like shouting and like screaming and yelling. And I was like, ah, and I like take my pants off immediately. And I'm just like, oh, centipede. And so you could see centipede bites have like, they're like two little dots next to each other. Um, and so there was one or two on the front of my leg and one or two on the back. Um, and um, so then dad takes my jeans and he throws them off our balcony. We lived on one of those houses. <laughs> Um, we lived in one of those houses that's like up on stilts, kind of. Um, the Australians, Ruben and Elliot, were kind of describing we have similar houses in Hawaii. So, um, so that he like threw them off the balcony, right? And um, I remember my phone was in those jeans. And so my phone was destroyed essentially, and I got a new phone. Um, and it was like it was just such that a buzzkill. I mean, the, the party was sort of winding down or something, but it was just like then my friends came into my house and see me in like pajama shorts with like <laughs> ice on my leg that's like also bleeding from the bite marks slightly and we're just sort of like well i guess we're leaving so it was sort of funny these parties yeah. ended up like that malia <laughs> 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 i don't know what that means yeah. either 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I feel like uh, I feel like my story sounds a lot less exciting, but you have a couple of exciting ones. I feel I'll, like yeah, I'll, I have a few centipede stories, but one only one I ever got bit. Um, <sighs> when I was in sixth grade, one climbed on my leg during lunch in the cafeteria and i whacked so it off horrifying. my leg with a bag of carrots and it didn't bite me horrifying. and then when i i went to take a shower and turned on the water and it crawled out of the drain <gasps> um, horrifying. Which, and i and i remember like just spraying i was like i didn't know what to do and so i like jumped out and grabbed a towel and i just started spraying like it with the water to keep it from climbing up the walls and i was like dad and he was all like well get a slipper like go kill it and i was like what? that he was kind of irritated but he he killed it for me but then the time i actually I, got yeah well i i just want to say i'd never ever ever stood on that shower drain ever again because it was just like it's it was just a shower it wasn't like a bath and shower so usually like the drain is there and you don't really think about it but i i never fucking put my foot on the shower drain ever yeah again. i don't think i did either because i was like i definitely was nervous to take a shower in there for a while after that um the time i actually got bit was at soccer practice uh in high school and we had a water break Ow. and i took a drink from my this water one's... bottle and there was a baby centipede that was curled around the lip of my water bottle and it bit me right on the lip oh um, man i'm glad you didn't swallow it jen <laughs> <laughs> no i'm serious that would have been yeah it didn't get wow. in my Ow. mouth luckily it was just <laughs> bit me on the outside um Ow. and it hurt my lip was yeah. a little swollen, but it wasn't too bad. And did you keep practicing or did you leave? I think I left to get some ice on it, but then mm. I came back. <laughs> well, I think I came back after a bit. Wow. It wasn't as, as bad as it could have been. So, <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> well, okay. anyway, back to the, back to the <laughs> podcast. So much for that. So yeah. the centipede. Yeah. That's yeah. all I can talk about. Thanks, Eloise. I can't even talk about her anymore. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right so we've got another from sleeping beluga um i say talk about seeing the group of practitioners bind the hungry choir um how do you think you would go about binding one of the members of the kennet others and what do you think the general steps for binding might be beyond the one specified and you might not have a clue and that's fine yeah i don't I have much of one i will point. just say <laughs> Let's bind Matthew because he's up to something. And so first you have to identify that your That sounds foe. kinky, Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Way to Malia. make it weird. You're weirdo. Thanks, God, Maria. I, I, I Family need to apologize. Bondage. You need to... Family bondage. Oh, we don't so, need to bring that doing, into now this. Now you have to explain. <laughs> So no, weird. they they know it's fine. They do? If you okay. don't know, go listen to the first episode of our other podcast. <laughs> oh, did we All already right. talk about it? Okay. Yeah, and then I gave Malia crap about it too because she made it weird. Because oh. she not only said family bondage, and then she like said something like 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 sex bondage or something, and I was like, <laughs> "What did you say I that? Said, I said not like the sex. Oh, oh my okay. god! Yeah. But you still said sex in there, and I was like, really? <laughs> like way to just really make it like." weird okay you know so, anyway, really parents on. are supposed to embarrass their kids and i <laughs> and i just have to say really you guys are really good at embarrassing me so yeah. good, good job you've, you've embarrassed us quite a few times okay as well, good so, okay but you're right well, anyway weird. back to back anyway to sorry bondage. step one okay step one identify <sighs> your foe and then Fuck i yeah. think you have to like um fight them, them or something so mm -hmm. let's get him with the centipede eloise is my friend <laughs> You just, no, I'm serious because that centipede has the power to grow into a huge monster. He was wrapped around her arm. He can wrap around a tree. I mean, he can grow like 30 times. Okay. So I'm going to get him and we, we don't even have to, he, you know, we don't even have to do anything except sick that little centipede on him and he'll surround him and he's, so anyway, I don't, you asked me this That's stuff. It. That's what comes hey, that's out after right. I read this. So that's just, the answer yeah. to my question. Sorry. You're, you're, I still, I get that you've been like suspicious of Matthew for a bit, but I feel like your <laughs> abrupt ish change from like Matthew is the protagonist of this love story to like <laughs> sick a centipede, a giant centipede on Matthew is like kind of poor Matthew. <laughs> it's kind of funny. <laughs> you guys are so much further into this. So you know he's going to turn on somebody and be a bad guy. Do we know that? I don't know. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Um, um, okay. So Snowdrop's Tiny Fan asks, 
Based on their responses when the girls questioned the Ken and others about the Hungry Choir's creation, who do you most suspect was behind the summoning of Yalda, so the creation of the Hungry Choir? Matthew! <laughs> I'm sticking to it. <laughs> I'm sticking to it. They said there was okay. a man and a woman. The man moved like he was older, but he wasn't old. There was that's Matthew and um what's her name? Edith. But mm. Edith has some secrets going, right? Can you elaborate? Well, how do I know? You guys are so far ahead in the story. <laughs> We're not going to tell you. <laughs> We're not you're like tell Edith you has that. secrets, and we're like, like what, mom? And you're like, I don't know. <laughs> well, tell me the secret. Up, I, you're not going to trick to, us. It has to do with the baby, the baby. <laughs> this sounds like it's going to go in a really horrifying yeah. direction. <laughs> it, it is. It is. But I wish you guys. I wish this wasn't just an audio podcast because you should see their faces. You guys are hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, okay, geez. that's all I've got to say because I can't spoil it for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You can spoil it? No, I can't. I can't. We got to, because I don't want I don't want any spoilers here. So there. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. We won't spoil, we won't let you spoil the podcast for the book you haven't read this far. <laughs> <of>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, Sleeping Beluga asks, which of the cons- confiscated items from Zed would you want to have for yourself? Okay, so I went back and read that um, the extra material. It was the extra, yeah, because I didn't know <laughs> what that was talking about. And it has like the cassette and some songs and stuff like that, um, a jammer thing. But I decided to take the grungy keyboard. And not that I like something grungy and it's kind of big, you know, to carry around, but I really found it satisfying that to use it, you had to smash the most expensive thing you can find. I just, there was something really cathartic about that, you know? So um, I just liked it. I'm like, I could see me doing that. If some goblins raced in there, just grabbing that thing and just smashing the TV or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that's my reason. Just like cool. it. All right. Cool. Um, along similar lanes, this is this is <laughs> aka Z T Y T H This is this Y Z. This is this. This is this. Yeah. Um asks, now that we've been introduced to technomancy, are there any old pieces of technology from <laughs> your life that you could see being used as magical items? Um, something lost in a drunk junk drawer or a closet or something like that. Um, and what do you think they'd do? That is such a fun story because I could go on and on with this one the more I thought about <laughs> stuff. Um, first, I thought of an eight, eight track player because that's kind of obvious, but well, maybe it's not obvious, but that's an old thing. And it's an um, old thing. <laughs> I mean, there's even like, um, oh, well, I'll, I'll go by what I was thinking or I'll get way off base. Um, do you guys remember MySpace? I mean, that was, yes. that mm-hmm. could hold some <laughs> valuable information on there. <laughs> So, I mean, think of the stupid pictures you put up and the dumb things you said. Oh, but we no. could find out things about people on there. And um, and it probably still has a camera that is somehow looking into your lives, you know, because what? you didn't turn. Yeah, because you didn't turn on your your old phone, like the first or second one you had when you were about 16 years old. You never destroyed it properly. And it's in there recording everything. Okay, so not like MySpace, but your old phone is is recording. Well, cool. that too, but it goes okay. via MySpace into the universe oh. to the bad people. Okay, so cool. See, I don't know anything. Um, okay, the another thing, I an easy bake oven. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> those things. Okay, what have what could you do power. with an easy bake oven? <laughs> what couldn't well, you do? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, you they have do a lot. You you know, it's like old microwaves that have bad stuff. Those guys, you plug them in and there's all this electronic crap coming into the microwave that's destructive. And you're going to, you know, you're going to put a cupcake in there and um, turn the thing on and, and bake it. And it's going to have stuff that, you know, it, it's going to have implants that go into different people that can record where they are and um, who they're voting for and, you know, who they've kissed and all the kind of stuff. 
<laughs> the easy bake oven? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? That's okay. it. Okay. I'm sorry you asked me. I don't so, understand. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know where to go with these questions, so I just go. So, um, And the last thing that is the spookiest is a Furby. Yeah, yeah that's freaking terrifying. <laughs> Yeah, because we still have, I still have my daughter's Furbies in the attic, and they still kind of creep me out. I try where they not belong. to where they belong, but still, they still work. One of them I did like turn on or touch or talk to or something one time, and its little eyes rolled out, and it was like, eh, nope. and it was nope. just like nope. so creepy. <laughs> so I'm saving them for you guys because I know that you never want me to throw this away. I know you yeah. love those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I don't that, even know what the powers are in that thing, but um, what would they do? Oh, man. I don't know. They just like eat your soul. <laughs> yeah. Well, it can see mm-hmm. into your soul with those eyes. <laughs> Definitely. Those Furbies are, yeah. And the like scary. beak thing, it's going to, yeah, it'll eat you. Oof. Eat something. Yeah. So, so those creepy. are my things. So creepy. Awesome. <laughs> creepy, 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 creepy. Wow. Um. So our last question needs a little bit of explanation. It's from Elliot. Um, and Elliot wants to know why you allowed <laughs> us to enroll in Dirt Club. But for those of you who aren't on our Discord, very briefly, um, Dirt Club was better known as something like the Soil Conservation Awareness Competition. Um, <laughs> apparently exists all over the United States. And what it is, is you're assessing land plots to see what they'd be good for. The fun thing is the land plots that you're assessing aren't real. Um, You go out into some sort of field and they've constructed this sort of like fake thing for you to assess. Like you're, you're not actually testing the actual dirt in that place. They've brought dirt for you to test and they like dig a thing so you can like measure the soil depth, but they're like different depths in different parts of the plot. Um, And they make the soil, uh, the slope of the land by putting like stakes in the ground and having you measure it. So it's wild and fun. Um, It's also (laughs) completely silent. So imagine like 40 high schoolers with clipboards wandering around in a field, completely silent, like rubbing mud between their fingers to guess whether the it's clay or loam or whatever. And like using measuring tapes in like holes in the ground dug by bulldozers um, (laughs) to figure out how deep the soil is. Um, It's real fun and real fucking weird. And it's real weird. Elliot is pretty nerdy, completely yeah. perplexed. And so, mom, why did you allow us to do this? <laughs> Elliot, Elliot, that's the best question. And just, I, I mean, why wouldn't I? I don't get that. <laughs> I, I, now I want to know about Elliot. I want to know if he has kids because this will be great because he'll understand when, later. But I just, you know, I let him do pretty much anything. I'm, I'm really happy that they were game for getting involved with a lot of stuff. I mean, we, we pushed them to do certain things, but I think it's really good for kids and adults, but may, really good for mm-hmm. kids growing up to have different experiences. You don't want them just in sports. You want them in sports and dirt club, you know, different things. <laughs> and so I was thinking of different things. I, I think the more experiences you have while growing up, the more well-rounded you'll be. I think it's really good for you. Mm -hmm. And um, so the girls have done many different things. And I I could think of some of them here. Um, They took karate or karate, I should say, (laughs) piano and ukulele, um, junior lifeguard training. Oh, my God. I'm (laughs) sorry. I forgot about that. (laughs) I triggered. (laughs) I know. I'm sure you guys can think of more. Girl Scouts, they actually put on a a summer camp or a week-long camp for little Girl Scouts. Um, they were altar servers. They babysat. Um, master of ceremonies for the Ho'olalea. The, mm. They were on canoe team, which is very cool. They raced canoes in the ocean. <laughs> they mm-hmm. were in dance. And they were on soccer, swim team, and riflery. So they shot guns yeah. at things. Yeah, Well, so- air riflery, so. Oh, yeah. come on, Malia. I was okay. making it sound I cool. Just, I think I got it, like it, second it was to last cool. Oh, it wasn't really bullets? <laughs> but... I don't know. They were, it, they would probably hurt. They could, I don't know. If, it was they more kill like, you? Pel- they were, I mean, anything could probably kill you. These little pellet things. Yeah, I oh, think okay. it probably could, but. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't, I didn't place well, but I don't think I tried as hard as I should have because I think for living what? in Texas, I've gone to, for riflery. Oh. I think I got like second to last place in the competition, <laughs> but like, I think I, if, <laughs> I, going to the range now, um, 
since I live in Texas and I don't know, I do that sometimes. Um, I'm a lot better shot than I think Ooh. I used to be. Cool. Yeah. Did um, any of those traumatize you or do you think you actually grew as an experience from any of those? Does anything stuck stick out? Jenny and I were traumatized in different ways by the junior <laughs> lifeguard training. <laughs> I don't even remember it. That's how traumatized you were tra- I am. <laughs> you were traumatized because we had to do swim lessons with literal children. Yeah, and then I was traumatized by having to run on the beach. Those things were connected. <laughs> they were connected? I, huh. Yeah, we the, did the... Yeah, I mean... Dad wanted to make sure we didn't drown if we were ever in some sort of like uh, bad situation um, in the ocean or whatever. Which um, makes sense. And so he wanted us to be able to swim really well. And so... Uh, how old He's, were you, Jenny? I, I was in like... I was going into sixth grade and oh, that's so horrible. Um, right. So you were like 13, 12 or 13? Mm, no, 11 no. Or 12 or 13? I, was like, I was like 11. No, she was like 11. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so I was like nine, eight or nine. And they signed so- us up with a kindergarten swim class by accident <laughs> and he wouldn't change He wouldn't it. let up. He wouldn't <laughs> let up. He made us do the fucking kindergarten swim class <laughs> and the public pool in the middle the of public summer pool. where all of the kids from my school so like sorry. were going to swim and yeah yeah i didn't find it nearly as embarrassing um and she the instructor you know obviously so was like i'm so sorry that you're here and like taught us the butterfly and stuff so that was cool yeah um but, but yeah he, so that he still doubles down to this day and is like well but you guys could swim a lot better after that and i was like well yeah thanks, well so then, so then the next year we got junior lifeguard training for a similar reason and jenny was all like cool and athletic and running on the beach and having a grand time and i was like wow i literally hate this and i'm dying <laughs> <laughs> um so I forgot about that yeah the thing i liked the most that i can remember in terms of weird random stuff was the milk carton regatta oh yeah <gasps> That's true. That, that was, was fun. You should explain that. <laughs> so basically in high school, um, yeah, like just on I don't even know if they do this anymore. I kind of hope they do because it's just really awesome. But like um the main like dairy on Maui um would sponsor um a like a canoe regatta. And so all the main high schools like um they would basically give um I don't know how many, but like a Oh, shit, pretty ton. much <laughs> as many like m- like unused like empty milk cartons as they wanted and the whole point it was like you had to build a canoe out of milk cartons and tape and that's it that's I all think you, you were allowed use. a very small amount of wood um but were i don't you? think we ever really used it i think of, mm, maybe. i don't think we used wood we ever. didn't use wood yeah um i think i'm pretty sure it was just yeah i'm pretty sure it was just um yeah, milk cartons and tape. Yeah. I mean, and we dominated. We <laughs> we did really good. We did good. Yeah, because like these <laughs> real live humans had to get into this thing on the actual ocean and, and paddle the, out to yes. a buoy and around and back. No, um, like yes. in a yes. race. I didn't remember you went all the way out to a um, buoy. Wow. Yeah, not. Was, I mean, not like a really far buoy. I think it was placed for the competition, but, but it was in the actual like, ocean. You had to go out and, in the actual yeah. ocean and paddle it. <laughs> and it was, did anybody it was sink really from any of the other teams? Oh yeah. Oh, so, oh yeah. Sank most people sank. Sank. <laughs> most people sank yeah um i think ours still like so at least some of ours like some of the years like sank after a while but like mm-hmm. we still did pretty good mostly <laughs> we had a good um, system of like the various layers of tape and like interlocking the milk cartons in such a way that they would be like isolate we use so much tape <laughs> we use a lot of tape we use a lot of tape um but yeah that was that was great that was, that was really, fun. really fun Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> that is a good one. <laughs> yeah. 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 More weird facts about our childhood for Elliot to like freak out about. I know. Dirt He's going to be like, yeah. you to go <laughs> out in the middle of the ocean with milk cartons? What yeah. the heck? <laughs> it, was, it was good. I mean, it was fun. <laughs> yeah. They didn't, it wasn't like a real stormy day or anything. So it wasn't like crazy, crazy like surf. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> All right. Um, any other thoughts on this chapter so far? Yeah. No, that was a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, we'll get, we'll do our th- three things on this chapter. Tell us your three things. Okay. My three things. Um, my favorite quote was, I'm trying to be the most useless little shit. I just love that. Because, <laughs> yeah, everybody Can knows that. Can you give us context? 
Yeah, I, I, don't I don't even remember. know. That was, you know. Who that said was, that? Oh, come on. Who would say that? Snowdrop. Some. Oh. Does that like, make Coach you happy? Hollow, I just Verona, love Cherry it. Pop. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> Snowdrop. Funny. Yeah, that is so funny. I, we just love Snowdrop. And then, yes. um, oh, the other thing <laughs> that was kind of funny from this this whole thing was I learned that there are two meanings for wife beater. I didn't know that before. <laughs> well, I really? don't know what a wife beater was. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? I thought it was a person who beats their wife. No, well, well, that's, that's one. Tank <laughs> top. That's the weirdest thing I've ever heard in my life. It's because that's what a lot of wife beaters wear. Well, that's so weird. I, it is, I don't even, but who would even it, know that? I apparently some people do, I guess. Millennials. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I learned. I did learn that in like junior high or high school. Yeah, high school. Oh, okay. So, and the only other thing I just ended with is I don't ever want to read about another hungry choir ritual. I mean that it that's really that's tough. <laughs> yeah, to get through. So there. That's fair. I'm kind of afraid that I'm gonna run into something like that again, but don't tell me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't tell you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Now it's time for mom's book recommendation where she. If you want to take a break from Pale, try to read this other book. Okay. Which is the the book Mama I'm calls. recommending, I'm still not done, but I I really really like it. I mean, you guys, I I love this book. I these this genre, I'm afraid once you get into it, you never get out, but there's other books out there that are really good and I'm reading this one there are and I'm reading one called A Town Like Alice and I knew what that was because um Pat and I were have gone to Australia and there's this town in the outback in the boonies called Alice Springs. And I was like, it has to be Alice Springs. And, and it is, and this is a novel by Navelle shoot Norway. And um, Hmm. I've been reading it and I still haven't quite, I'm at this really, really good part, but um, it, it, I, I had to look it up today to find out if it's a true story because I'm like, I swear, I bet you this is a true story. And it is, which makes it like a hundred times better. And so um, it's a true story with um, basically um, the heroine is a strong, courageous, um, independent female main character. And I really like that. I just think she's amazing. It takes place during World War II. And um it's true, you guys. <laughs> this this woman is Jean Page. She's um, a young English woman living in Malaya. And I wasn't sure if that's Malaysia. I think it's related to Malaysia. But um, she's captured during World War II by invading Japanese. And she's forced on a brutal seven-month death march with dozens of other women and children that are all English the English or Dutch mm-hmm. they're um so hmm. on a part and it's just this crazy horrible march where they never let hmm. them ride in a truck or whatever and they were supposedly you know like oh just go to this other place and there's this wonderful you know can't you know uh it's not a concentration camp, but a, you know, a prison camp for women that you guys are going to love it. You'll be so happy. And they would march for (laughs) 50 miles. Uh, Yeah, I know it's weird. And they'd march for 50 miles in the hot sun and they'd get, Uh. you know, malaria and cholera and people would die and things would happen. And then of course, when they'd get to that town, there was no camp there and they just Mm. kept getting this and there was never a camp. And, um, but anyway, she, this is the whole story. It's really incredible. There's a um, <clears throat> she she ends up in this one town. Um, it, oh, I won't tell the whole story. But anyway, she's there for um, three years working in rice paddies so that they can get food and have a place to stay. She kind of made a deal with people. She's really smart and um, and basically saved the the lives of these other people, the other women oh, wow. and kids, and be, by figuring this out. And then she Hmm. was able, the war ends, she travels back to England and um, she gets this inheritance. Well, she uses the inheritance to go fly back to this rice paddy town because she wants to give back to these people that she feels um, basically saved her life, you know, by Hmm. letting them work in the rice paddies. And um, so she, she decides to go over there, spend the money to build a well, a well, 
that, and, and um, because they never had one and stuff. And um, but during this whole story, when she was on this march, there was an Australian that um, was in a truck that would cross their path every once in a while. And he um, helped them at one time when they were starving and mm. um, it was basically, uh, I won't even tell the whole thing, but it was so horrible. He helped them with some food sometime that he um, stole from this uh, mean Japanese commander guy. And um, he was put to death almost, but she thought he had died and he didn't. And so at the end, I'm right at this part where she's flown to Australia to find him in the outback and um, trying to track him down through all these different things. And she finally found the town in the boonies where he is and found out he's flown to England to find her. And um, he still thought she was married. I mean, it was all this innocent, but they did. It was a real intense time and stuff. So I'm still reading really quickly to try to get to the part where they get together. And I haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Spoilers! I'm, I, 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 well, I can't Jeez. help it. You guys, you have to read this. Just read it, read it. Read it. Well, good. Like I said, it's a spoiler, but I haven't gotten there. So I'm not, it's not family. I didn't really spoil it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking that's going to happen. And it's just the best story. I'm like, wow, this woman was amazing. Wow. Really. So that's my story. I hope you guys read it. What was it called? All right. It was A Town, a Town Like, like Alice. Alice. Yeah, you two read it too. I'm serious. I'm going to okay. quiz you next time. It's very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in law school. I don't have time to read. There's <sighs> always that excuse. Okay. <laughs> that is kind of a good one. That's kind of a good one. All right. Yes. Well, our mom makes cards and we try to give them away <laughs> we are a little behind on sending them to people but we are doing it <laughs> um let me see our current winner hasn't messaged me back quite yet so i'm not going to say who it was but i think last time let me see our last card winner was taste of death which is a great username. Uh, but <laughs> and I, I promise, knew mom was going to say something. I promise to actually send it really yeah, soon. She's in law school, you guys. So there. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be her excuse only for the next few months. And then it'll be something And then else. I have to study for the bar. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> send, the, send the thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so if you want to receive one of our mom's cards, potentially, um, you can comment on the Reddit post for this episode, or you can tweet at Pale Comparison with the hashtag Our Mom Critiques Wild Bow, um, and we'll enter you in a drawing, and you can get one of these sweet cards um, because they are really adorable. And I will send it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this That's me? You. Oh. That's you. <laughs> Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please subscribe, share it with your friends, and leave a rating and review. If you'd like to support Wild Bow, go to patreon.com slash Wild And if you want to support me, check out my blog at www.createwithcheryl.me. You can also check out Pale in Comparison, a podcast where Malia uses her knowledge of pale to guess what happens in Pact one of Wild Bo's other web serials, and I try to not give anything away. In addition, check out all the other great shows in the Doof Network and support us at patreon.com slash doofmedia. You can follow us on Twitter at Pale Comparison or send us an email at paleincomparisonpod at gmail.com. Also, be on the lookout for that Reddit post where you can share your thoughts on this episode and enter our giveaway. Um, also, we haven't done it in this feed yet, so I wanted to plug um doof media has a new show um new called show. the view <coughs> Woo! it's called the view from halfway down and it's a podcast where alexandra and sebastian cover bojack horseman um i still haven't listened to it because i still haven't watched the show but they also guested on an episode of the doof cast recently and they have a really fun dynamic um so i'm sure that that show is also really great yeah i hope heard- to listen to it at some point I also haven't watched BoJack Horseman, so shame on me. But um, I've heard really good things, so you guys should check out the podcast and the show. Yes. All right. Have a good day, week, month, year, life. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Cover Bye. everything. <laughs> Woo! Okay. Bye. Have a happy bye. bye. <laughs>